Greetings. Welcome back to Black Bear News, where we are discussing climate change, abrupt climate change, and things adjacent. Uh, thank you, as always, for your comment and discussion, and your contributions to this channel are highly, highly appreciated. Uh, I'm going to bring you this article, frightening, of course, but this is, you know, there are there's evidence that this is happening, you know, on a on a huge level. And I talked about this probably a long time ago, maybe a year ago. Sunk, sunken Soviet submarine leaking high levels of radiation. Uh, and this is a video, so I'm just going to link this. Cold War, Cold War era Soviet submarine that has been sitting in the Norwegian Sea for three deca decades is leaking an unusually high amount of radiation, according to the Institute of Marine uh, Research. Uh, yeah, uh, just an interesting video, you know, check it out. Um, just frightening stuff. Uh, there there appears to be actually lots and lots of sunken, you know, barrels of radiation. Obviously, Fukushima, there, you know, there's they're just letting radiated water right out into the ocean. And um, But in the past, there has been evidence that, you know, uh, barrels full of radioactive material were just pushed off ships for decades, and they're all just floating around in the ocean, uh, leaking radiation. So, um, and there's also, you know, other frightening things going on. Uh, there's also the Soviet Union is floating a nuclear reactor in the Arctic right now. Um, and that can only mean, you know, great things. What could go wrong? Uh, just more evidence of human stupidity and hubris and, um, and laziness and carelessness, uh, as, you know, as brilliant as we are, we seem to excel in just doing shitty, shitty things. Uh, let's stay in the oceans and look at this article from Scientific American it's from July 15th, 2019. Humans may be accidentally geoengineering the oceans. Iron particles released by industrial activities are falling into the seas in greater quantities than previously thought. So this is an interesting thing, talking about uh, accidental iron release in the oceans that might be counteracting carbon uptake on some level. Um Doubtful if it's at a level enough to counteract it completely. As the saying goes, what goes up must come down. And as it turns out, a lot of what goes up comes down into the world's oceans. Iron particles released by human industrial activities are one example of a pollutant that goes into the atmosphere and eventually settles into the sea. Now, new research suggests that human emitted iron is accumulating in the ocean in much greater quantities than scientists previously estimated. It may also be dissolving into the water more easily than suspected. The consequences are still unclear, but they're worth investigating. Scientists say iron is one of the key nutrients that tiny phytoplankton organisms in the ocean need to thrive. In regions where its levels are limited, adding more iron to the water can give plankton a boost, potentially altering both marine food webs and the ocean's carbon uptake. In fact, this phenomenon is the basis for a controversial geoengineer, uh, geoengineering concept that some scientists have proposed to tackle climate change known as iron fertilization. The idea involves adding iron to certain remote regions of the ocean where iron nutrients tend to be limited. Doing so could promote the growth of phytoplankton, which naturally suck up carbon dioxide. We're most likely looking at um, very low levels of phytoplankton now, of course, because a lot of marine life uh, that need it to survive are showing up on shores and beaches and in water looking emaciated or outright dead. Uh, when the phytoplankton die, those that don't get eaten by other animals fall through the water column and become trapped at the bottom of the sea, effect effectively locking away the stored up carbon for good. To date, various research groups <clears throat> have conducted more than a dozen small-scale iron fertilization experiments. With somewhat mixed results, some studies suggest that carbon storing effects are more significant than others. 
the carbon storing effects. At the same time, some experts have expressed concern that iron fertilization could have unforeseen consequences on marine ecosystems. Others say more research is needed. Now, the new study would seem to suggest that humans may already be engaging in a kind of inadvertent iron fertilization. More evidence of, of accidental geoengineering. Oops. But we know that we're doing that hand over fist on all levels, everywhere that we uh, touch on this planet. Uh, but whether it's having any significant effect on marine ecosystems or carbon storage is still unknown. The study led by Tim Conway of the University of South Florida set out to investigate the difference between iron inputs from natural sources and iron from human activities. Scientists have long known that dust from the Sahara swept by winds into the sea tends to be rich in iron and accounts for a great deal of the iron particles that wind up in the Atlantic Ocean. Iron input from the anthropogenic sources uh, like the burning of fossil fuels and other industrial activities is believed to be comparatively much lower. The new study investigated the issue by chemically anal analyzing iron samples from the North Atlantic, aerosols from dust, and from human sources tend to have slightly different chemical fingerprints related to the ratio of iron isotopes it contain. The analysis suggested that human sources of iron are probably significantly higher than previous studies have estimated. The study also found that these human iron inputs likely dissolve into the water much more easily than iron from natural sources, making them more readily accessible to hungry phytoplankton. Oh, goody. Well, we can't stop industrial activity now <laughs> because uh, that would stop the, you know, the geoengineering we're doing. The researchers used their observations to tweak certain model simulations of the entire global ocean. The adjusted simulations seem to suggest that findings don't apply only to the North Atlantic. Human iron imports inputs may be higher in other regions of the world as well, including iron-limited parts of the Pacific Ocean. <clears throat> as time goes on, we'll just find out that... Um, all the things that we thought we were supposed to do to fight climate change are all wrong. Much like Woody Allen's sleeper where <laughs> they real over time, they realized that it was, you know, eating lots of meat and never exercising was great for you. Right. Everybody see that movie. So we can't stop industrial, you know, uh, industrial civilization because we need to keep these iron inputs going into the ocean and we have to keep global dimming going and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, in places like the equatorial Pacific, the North, North Pacific, and the remote Southern Ocean, on the other hand, iron is more likely to be the limiting factor if iron inputs are on the rise in these places, especially if they're easily dissolvable in the water, then plankton communities can theoretically, theoretically increase in growth. Um, so they're actually talking about you know, doing the geoengineering scientists have been exploring the possible effects of iron fertilization as a form of geoengineering for at least 15 years. Really? So you're saying it's a brand new idea. Whoa. Wow. In that time, various research groups have conducted, <laughs> you mean only since the year 2003 or whatever, 2004, they just were like, you know what we do guys, you know what we can do? <laughs> At that time, various research groups have conducted at least 13 experiments in both natural and controlled environments, according to a 2016 review paper. Scientists are still debating how useful the process could be for climate mitigation. As the review paper notes, studies have generally demonstrated that iron fertilization does boost the growth of plankton in iron-limited waters. The remote southern ocean is the region that most researchers suggest would be best suited for iron fertilization. But just how much carbon is actually getting stored away at the bottom of the ocean is less clear. Some research uh, has suggested that the, that the carbon sequestering effects are minimal, while others' experiments suggest a stronger impact. Even in the best-case scenario, the overall climate impact of iron fertilization would likely be small, according to Christine Klaus, uh, or Klaas, a researcher with the Alfred Wegener Institute for Polar and Marine Research who has participated in past iron fertilization experiments. The rough estimates of how much carbon we could take away by fertil fertilizing most of the Southern Ocean are around one gigaton per year. Not a lot. <clears throat> and our current emissions are around 11 gigatons per year. <clears throat> she pointed out. So it would be around 10% of what we're emitting today. 
That means that iron fertilization, like other forms of geoengineering, isn't a solution to the climate problem. She added, it's one potential tool that could help bring emissions down faster, but it's not a substitute for the urgent need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions worldwide. The concept hasn't been without its controversies, of course. Uh, Some experts have cautioned that introducing phytoplankton blooms could lead to unintended consequences for marine ecosystems either by inadvertently triggering toxic algae blooms or by altering marine food webs in unexpected ways. Right. Other scientists, including Klaus, point out that the ideal fertilization sites in places like the Southern Ocean don't support many toxic species in the first place. Um, Iron fertilization experiments today are subject to certain regulations under the London Convention on the Prevention of Marine Pollution. Whether scientists should continue with them is still a matter of debate among experts. Klaus is an advocate of continued research. Hamilton, on the other hand, this is another scientist, said that it's better not to even go there. I think history has shown us that when we start tinkering with the environment, invariably things that we have not considered crop up. He said there's unknown unknowns in the system. This would be absolutely the case with any of the geoengineering options being talked about at the moment. As long as industrial activity is causing inadvertent iron fertilization anyway, he noted, the new study may be a good starting point for understanding the effects that it's already having on the global oceans. <clears throat> Moving forward now, the idea ideally is that we measure this in locations that we know are going to be sensitive to the changes in iron emissions due, th- due to anthropogenic activity in the future so that we can have a handle on how much we're perturbing that system. Yeah. <clears throat> damned if we do. Damned if we don't. Damn it, we're doing too much already. Um, interesting article, interesting thoughts expressed in this. Let me know what you all think. I think that is all I'm going to cover today in this video. Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Until next time, peace.